uh, median age for our uh, community with over 10,000 young children, school age children, but we have a lot of adults that are playing on these fields too. These fields are a very important part of quality of life for many people within our community. Um, so as you can see per the agreement, there's mowing, field prep, cleaning, um, there's some capital improvements, and this is Atwater Park. So if anybody's been out to Atwater Park, especially for a little league season opener, you'll see that these fields are really well maintained. Um, as we look at the cost of this level of service is definitely something that can be considered to amend the budget costs. I know many of us grew up playing on fields that look more like the movie Sandlot than these fields, um, but there is some benefits to having the ongoing maintenance. Um, catch up is always more expensive than keep up. But for these fields, there's also um, beyond just an aesthetic pleasing look, when a field is well maintained, it can withstand Florida weather better, the rain, the heat, all those cleats pulling up at the turf. If it's well maintained, it has enough root system to withstand that and not become barren quickly. Um, it also, we have a lot of very interesting bugs in Florida, so that has to be considered as well. Um, so as you're looking at these fields and they do look really nice, there's a lot of work that goes into them. And as Commissioner Emmerich mentioned during a budget workshop a few weeks ago, maintaining these fields is very different than the great work our groundskeepers do maintaining open fields. So at Atwater, we have four little league fields. So that's this quad below. And then we have the one regulation field. There's a two-story press box, building with restrooms, batting cages. They do maintain the parking lots and the parking lot islands. And there's a maintenance shard for staff. Um, currently, our staff maintains the playground, splash pad, and pavilion areas. So for FY19, there was, based on the county's fee schedule, they received um, two, or $21,000 after about 4,000 rentals. This field, these fields do get a lot of play. Next, we have Butler Park. So we have the multi-purpose fields. We have one that's predominantly used for football three that can be used for football or soccer. Um, these fields also get a lot of play by both the Northport Youth Soccer, Adult Soccer, um, and the Huskies. We have uh, about 1,579 rentals, and the revenue based upon the county's fee schedule for FY19 was $5,434. Um, Vice Mayor, go ahead. Wouldn't you anticipate an increase in the rentals of this area because of the lighting and the bleachers and the amenities that have been added because now they can play at night? The lighting will make a big difference, absolutely. Um, we still will have periods where the fields will need rest, but the lighting will make a, a great difference. Thank you. I just have a question um, in general. When you say rentals, like for example, this one says 1,579, is that the total applications? Is that the- That's the hours of hours? rents. Hours? Yes, Thank you. the rental hours. So rental 1,579 equals rental hours. Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Dallas White Park. Um, this park is a combined effort between our staff and county staff. The county staff maintain the softball field and the two um, sand volleyball courts only. So the rest of the park is maintained completely by our staff. Um, the sand volleyball courts are not currently rented out by the county. They're extremely popular, though. Um, and then the rentals at 238 rental hours is for the softball field. Larry Tennyson fields or the GMAC fields, the ones directly behind GMAC over here by City Hall. Um, there's the two multi-purpose fields. Um, the county does maintain those fields, the bleachers, um, garbage cans within those fields. Anything outside of the fenced area is either the league's responsibility or the city's responsibility. And we, um, or this county received about $3,821 worth of revenue in FY19 for the rental of these fields. Marina Park, we often talk just about fields, um, but Marina Park is also one of the parks that are currently maintained by the county. Um, there's a pavilion there, docks, a kayak launch, um, and most importantly to many people, there is a great boat, motorized boat access. Um, so they do maintain this whole area. There are not uh, user fees associated with this park. Question please, can you go back? We're putting in a restroom this year? 
We are working on putting in a restroom this year. Yes, ma'am. Where will that go in relation to where you see the picture? Um, so there's the pavilion and that red car. It's going to kind of go in that polygon of grass to the right of the pavilion and um, next to that uh, sidewalk. I don't have a pointer. Oh, yeah, I do. So right around here. Thank you. Yep. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Commissioner, thank you very much. I know they just redid all the, the docking there. Was that, that done by the county or was that done by us, money-wise? That was done by us, correct? Yeah. It was done by us. Um, now, there are repairs. Last year, they did some repairs. The county did those repairs. Um, this year, they're looking to do additional repairs and just ongoing maintenance to those docks. Okay. What type of equipment do they use? Do they have, you have to have any um, amphibious type of Equipment or it is typically outsourced to a, another company. So um, I don't have that quote in front of me I know that they they use varying things. We just had the poles all wrapped and that did require some equipment like that So the county doesn't have their staff actually do it. They outsource it. They outsource equip, um, Repairs like this now they'll um, when it comes to the field maintenance that is their staff typically but um, when it comes to specialized things like dock repairs the county tends to outsource those and is the cost of the contract or outsourcing figured in all of their expenses? The expenses that they gave us do include all of their outsourced work. Okay. Uh, the agreement allows for up to $5,000 per park annually, CPI adjusted, so we're just over $6,000 a year at this point per park that they can spend on these, um, these improvements. Anything above that goes back to the city for consideration and budgeting. With or without outsourcing? Um, that would be to city normal procurement and based upon what we would be able to do in-house versus out-house. So the county pays up to, we'll call it $6,000 for any repairs necessary per park? Yes, that's not maintenance. So the standard right. maintenance is included, but um, any repair. So... At Marina right now, they just submitted a request to have a portion of this dock repaired. It's about $4,500. We're going to make sure that we want to do that. We approve it and then move forward. And then we track that money um, to make sure that we're maximizing the agreement. City manager. Just a um, logistical thing. If you guys aren't speaking, if we could have the microphones turn off, because anytime somebody moves a paper, the microphones are so sensitive, it picks it up really loudly. And... Commissioner Carasone then gets voiced out because that's all she can hear is the paper moving. So it's just, just a logistical thing that was requested. Thank you. And Commissioner Carasone, if you need to ask a question, please, uh, since I, I can't really hear you unless you speak up. So if you have any questions, just kind of pipe in when you hear a lull. Okay. I do have a question too, Go whenever ahead. you got time. Commissioner, how much on uh, this? Um, well, it's a general question on, on costs and revenues. I see the revenues are posted, but is the cost broken down in the backup or there, per park, or is it a general there's cost? Per, there is per park information provided. Okay. That's, that's good. That's all for yeah, now. Ms. Tricia. Um, Mayakehachi Creek Environmental Park. Um, the county does primarily outsource a lot of um, invasive species removal, mowing in this park. If we do have, they do have staff, and in our budget, we do have staff that would go out weekly and just walk in and make sure. There are um, rental fees associated with this for the pavilion, and also there's primitive camping back there. Um, the After primitive camping, it is important to have staff go out and make sure that the fires were put out properly and that there's no um, damage to the area. So uh, that does require that hands-on staff. Is that hands-on our staff or hands-on county staff? Currently, it's county staff within the budget, though. We have anticipated that our staff would need to be doing this work. Thank you. Um, so, Naramore slash Glen Allen Soccer, you'll see that um, the, these fields are called different things depending upon who is talking about them. So, I just named them both so that you could see through the backup. If all of a sudden it's Glen Allen, you know what's being said. County tends to refer to them as the Glen Allen soccer fields. Um, there's three lit multi-purpose fields. Lots of soccer happens at these fields. If you ever go past on a Saturday, it is jam-packed for the most part. Um, this one does provide a lot of rental hours, over 6,000 rental hours and $25,000 worth of revenue. Adjacent to that 
is Naramore softball. You'll see that there's three softball fields and one really small practice field. Um, this has 100 or 1,616 hours of rental, a little over $8,000 worth of revenue. Uh, Miss Northport Fast Pitch primarily uses these fields, but they are used by other groups. Um, we put our kickball league out there sometimes too, because it works really well for kickball. I want to brag about that. Um, you spoke earlier about the quality of the care and the maintenance of these fields. Uh, they have leagues come in from all over for that in softball. And the condition of the field is highly important to holding those types of events. So um, kudos to the county for their maintenance. And I guess my thing wasn't on, was it? I'm not used to on and off. Okay. <laughs> Kudos to the county for the maintenance and to our girls' softball league because they're doing a phenomenal job. Okay. Um, so now we get into the breakout of how the revenue comes to be. Um, Sarasota County has the fees that are listed on the right-hand side per use per field. Um, so you'll see that youth is only $2 per hour per field. Um, the most expensive is the general public at $16.50 per hour per field. Um, then there's tournament fees, lead, light fees, and then at the bottom you'll see the camping um, and pavilion use fees at Mayakahatchee Creek Environmental Park. So these are the fees that are associated with the rental <coughs> hours listed on the previous um, per commission direction. Our current budget proposal utilizes these fees based upon the numbers that the county had given us as far as rentals for what we anticipate our revenue to be. We have done research on fees um, by other entities, mm -hmm. um, specifically Charlotte County is the closest and most similar. Uh, Venice really uses um, Sarasota County fees. They're still in, in our local agreement and the city of Sarasota doesn't have as many offerings. Um, now Charlotte County does charge $10 per field per hour. However, if you're associated with a youth group, um, those fees can be primarily waived. So it's um, you know, while there's the possibility of a higher fee to be applied, it's it's not frequently applied, actually. So here's an interesting overview of the fees that are charged by the county. And again, these are um, numbers that were provided by the county for FY19, unaudited numbers. Um, but what I think is interesting is that you see that the primary category of use is the youth league. Um, and again, that is at our lowest dollar amount being charged. So that's why the revenue is where it is. Um, but it just breaks out who's using the fields, what, what age group is um, on the fields the most. Um, what we're looking at is a change yeah. in how our... Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and... Um, Commissioner Carasone, you're very garbled, so go ahead and you want to speak? Did you have a question? Yeah, I know that we've been told on it that Buckner can drop less than what the county could offer. And someone, but kind of a comparison, but the county state department. $30 an hour fee for the civilians that are much more than the state. Commissioner Carason, I, I apologize. We are catching like maybe every fifth word that you're trying to say. Are you speaking in the phone or are you speaking on the computer? I'm just trying to get a better understanding how we might be able to understand your question. Can't hear you, ma'am. Yeah. I can have some longer. But uh, all right. I, I I I don't know what to say, Commissioner Carison. We're we're trying to answer your question, but it's it's very difficult to hear. She and I know it's frustrating me, so for you, I'll, so... I'll um, know as soon as I get it. We're good. Keep going. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, so as part of this budget proposal, we're looking at significantly increasing the number of reservations that staff handle. Currently in the green, this is how many reservations we have a year for the facilities that we're currently doing reservations for. Um, the same year, Sarasota County processed over 15,000 reservation hours for our locations. Um, that would mean that we would be looking at more than double increase of our reservations. Um, that will obviously take a lot of staff time. So that is incorporated in this budget proposal. These are based on hours, yes. Not a single reservation, but hours. That is a good point, yes. This is based on hours. So there are going to be times where one user group puts in a submission and it's going to be many, many hours. Um, but to get to the lowest common de denominator, you, you go to hours since you can't just go to reservation papers. But even with um, a reservation coming in with multiple hours on it, there's a lot more that happens with the reservation. If there's rain or there's any changes um, in availability, there's the refunds and the reschedules, and those aren't included in here either. So just be thinking about that too. Um, while some of it is uh, streamlined through the process, there's a lot of background work that has to happen with changes. So here's the estimated cost for field preparation. Um, this is useful to know to how much is it gonna cost to get the field ready for play based upon the different field types. Um, and different uses. So um, getting a baseball field ready, about $100 worth of time and materials. And then for a tournament, it's a little bit more. But for a standard baseball game, you prep it once, you could probably play on it three times. So then you get the cost per field per play so that you can compare that to the fees coming in for that same play. So um, a youth game for baseball is about two hours. At $2 an hour, you're at about $4 worth of revenue in compared to the cost of $33 for prep. For an adult, it's $21 of revenue in for that $33 of prep. And then for a public user at a higher rate of $16.50, you're just at that break even mark. So as you go through, um, you'll see that the different costs for the different fields approximately based upon time and materials to prep. So this isn't any special maintenance. This isn't any special work that needs to just make sure that the fields are there ready to be able to be prepped and ready. Um, it's just for day of the game or day before the game. And this is the current cost broken down. This is based on current costs, yes. Thank you. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. City Manager, do you have uh, Commissioner Carson's question? Yes, ma'am. Her question was, we've been told repeatedly that we are less money for our fees, and yet the slide 12 seems to reflect the opposite. And I see or hear the comparison. Say the question again now that that's up, please. All right, we've been told repeatedly that we are less money for our fees, and yet the slide 12 seems to reflect the opposite. Can I see or hear the comparison? I do have comparison for all of our fees. We don't currently really have league fees. We don't have field fees. Um, we have open space fees, which do vary from the open space and pavilion fees that are listed here. And perhaps that is the question. Um, but the first, I don't know, 12 fees we, we don't have in our fee schedule. Um, but I can provide an overview of our fees compared to the neighbors. Um, I think we provided that in our original budget workshop, but I'll be glad to get that. Commissioner Carason, um, did that answer your question? Well, obviously not. That well, I heard space. crystal clear. Open space, pavilion. I will do, I do have an evaluation of those. Vanessa, are you talking about comparing the open space versus this rental space for a break even on the budget? Open space pavilion. She just emailed me, says open space pavilion. Okay. I understand open space and pavilion are totally different than a little league field. Is that what you're 
alluding to Commissioner Carison? I'd like to yeah. state that most I, of I'm, I asked you're I'm trying to help you get your question answered. Are you asking why are they comparing open space and pavilion to a manicured baseball field? I'm looking for the cost of our space rental versus I think I'm get in a little bit of what she was talking about. On this page 12, you've got open space and pavilion. That is strictly the parks that they take care of, correct? This is their current fee schedule, and our fees for pavilions are, um, I think our most expensive fee is $25 per hour. And again, if you have a membership that's half price, um, or if you're a nonprofit, some of our pavilions are less expensive depending upon size. Um, our open space is, less expensive as well, but I can provide that information so that for a comparison. See the yes, uh, I, th I think what she's trying to say, if I'm understanding, would behoove us to look at that as we try to set fees for the future, uh, knowing what we have currently on the books versus what's being done here. So Absolutely. We, have we, we, we need them to coincide. And Vanessa, I hope that helped. Immensely, thank you. Give one word and then. All right. Go so ahead. I think I was on. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry, I Commissioner Emmerich. I, I no, forgot. I had a question Go right ahead. On this slide here that she just popped up. Um, your difference between your standard and your tournament is that just basically like possibly restriping it Striping. more and, and and raking it throughout the day. So exactly. Right. Okay. I just wanted that on the record because there is a difference. It's not much, but it is a different scenario for each of these sports. So. Just wanted to get that out there. Thank you. Absolutely. Can you flip back to that, please, that one? As I'm looking, um, baseball might cost a little bit more. I mean, we have more of a deficit there. But as you go into the soccer and the football, it doesn't look as, I mean, it looks like there's a break even on that. Am I looking at this correctly? So if you're looking at the soccer standard, where it's about $27 per game, right. uh, for youth to play one game on there, you're going to have $6 of revenue. Um, but you're right, the break-even is closer. So at the adults, you end up um, recouping those funds. However, if you go back to that one slide where I showed that it was 71% of the reservations are youth, um, that's where the big deficit would be. But is not the next to the last, oh, that is adult, it That's says. That's adult general use. So that would be if you wanted a neighborhood football game and um, you signed up that way without being part but of the What's league. the last column? Because when it, this printed off, it cut the last column right off. Oh, I apologize. So I haven't it, been able to see it. The last column was what I was just explaining, so I'm sorry I misunderstood. Um, that is if you just had a neighborhood group and they wanted to use the field for an hour, it's sixteen fifty an hour. If you have a league that's doing the reoccurring renters, um, but it's an adult league, that was the ten twenty five an hour. And then if you have a youth league, that's the two dollars an hour. Okay, so that column with the youth is the total pretty much for their usage for that one game. So um, a typical baseball game is two hours for youth. Right. At two dollars so an hour, you're. They're paying $4 for that. Again, this is not including light fees if they were to be using <coughs> lights. This is just for the field rental. Um, so that's where the cost would come back. And where the adult, you do have some break-evens. You do you get, get close to break-even with adults and, and with the public. Right. But but thank it's you. such a smaller part of the use. The proportion, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Ms. Sandy, just to confirm, um, I think part of... Uh, Commissioner Carazon's question was what fees we're charging right now for pavilions. Um, our standard fee is um, ranges from 15 to 20 to 25, depending on the size of the pavilion. However, if you are a resident, it's $5, $10, or $15. How about open space? Uh, open space, I believe, are based on the same fee structure. 
um, depending on how many people can utilize that space. May I ask Vanessa, uh, Vanessa if she heard that reply? Do you have any follow-up question, Commissioner Carison? Uh, no. Thank you. As it stands right now, currently our fees for those open areas and pavilion is less than what the county is charging. So that's something we need to delineate and discuss um, whether we want to continue ours or even these new parks also. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Carison. I think that um, the way of calculation has been Okay. <laughs> he, I just sent you an email. <clears throat> Didn't hear what you said, ma'am. I know this has got to be very frustrating for you because it's frustrating for us because we're we want to get your questions and and have you be active in this. Are you still there? I think that the way we operate how we operate what, ma'am? The way we count. I'll email. City Attorney, can <laughs> can you help me out here? If if this if Commissioner Carison is if we can't hear the questions and City Manager is inter running, I I don't know what other word to use interference. Is is that appropriate? You have an in person quorum. Um, so you can continue with the meeting with or without the commissioner's participation. You also can take a break if you opt to, to try to address any technical issues. It's really up to the board. Uh, I, I, I'd I, like to take a break for well, 10 ac minutes. Actually, I would like to continue. Uh, I think her participation because of the history that she has with these well, agreements uh, is valuable. And even if we have to plug away the way that we are with her sending the messages via email, um, I think we, I mean, this meeting is for just this topic. And so I think it's valuable enough to have her input. Uh, I'd rather just struggle through the way we are. Commissioner, Car I'm sorry, Commissioner Emmerich, you're- uh, uh, City Manager, did you, you just get an update about what's going on with yeah, this? Yeah, it's, it's not on our end. It's a. Um, a service issue on the other end. I don't know if it's cell service. I'm not sure how she's calling in. If we're calling her cell, it might be a cell service issue. We've tested our end with landlines and, and everything. Our end technology-wise is working. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with um, continuing to read the emails. Obviously, I can't follow up if you have a follow-up question of what she sends. But it's, I also remember we had a similar situation with, I think it was a Zoom meeting or a hybrid meeting where the technology just didn't work and eventually it dropped, uh, it dropped Commissioner Carison completely. She said, keep going. All right. We will try. It is a cell issue. All right. She might, she might need to step outside the building. <laughs> yeah, if she's in a metal building, that could or, definitely or, be Or doing. hang up and try another connection, you know, trying to get through. Yeah, if, you know. if she's in a metal building, that definitely will be doing it too. So well, I, I don't know. Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, so this slide shows Sarasota County estimated operating cost per park for FY19 um, with the associated revenue side by side. So you can see uh, the cost. Now the um, fleet is below and personnel and administration is below as well. Sorry. So they have some within these expenses, there's some staffing. However, there's um, they do not have staff directly assigned to these parks necessarily covering all the positions. They'll have some staff assigned to Atwater and some to Naramore. Um, and then they have staff throughout the county that floats and helps. Um, so because they have 
so many locations to go to, you know, maybe they'll hit a Venice park and then come and work on a Northport park. So we don't have. Which, which is totally understandable. It's just scheduling. Exactly. That's all. Um, so if a staff member is assigned and dedicated to that park, those numbers are in line with that park. If they're a floater and they hit multiple parks um, or the administration portion, the reservation team, all of that is in the personnel and administration line down below. So you can see uh, the county okay. spent I, I, I'm sorry, I hit, the, Go ahead, please. Hit, hit this thing. So are you saying the personnel is broken out for our parks, or is this the personnel that was mm -hmm. used in all parks? Within the park line, there is some personnel in those expenses. However, yes. any additional this is just for our parks. This is just the personnel and administration costs associated with managing our parks within the contract. Um, whether that line, that kind of lump at the bottom, is if they weren't directly associated with a park that that line could go into, that's the catch-all for all of the work that they do to manage the contract. For our parks. For our okay. parks only. That, that's easily obtainable through ours, so thank you. Yes. Um, so we're at $1.4 million is what the... County spent in FY19 managing City of Northport Parks as per the our local, and they brought in about $65,000 worth of revenue. Ms. Shermerich, did you have a question? I So, can you go back? I am, sorry. Those last two, um, those are, just to make sure I'm hearing it correctly, those last two are specific to only Northport Parks. Correct. Those first, I don't know, eight of them from Atwater to Naramar, those are specific to not necessarily that park, but the maintenance of those parks. The line item the for Atwater Park where it's the 222,000, those numbers are directly attributable to work that was done at Atwater, at Atwater. Park. Thank you, thank you. So here's a comparison as to um, what budget proposal 1721 looks like. We worked really closely with the county through walkthroughs, on-site visits, quarterly meetings, um, looking at uh, reservation numbers, their costs, uh, their annual report. This is the breakout of the information they gave. Here's that same $1.4 million. Uh, based upon budget proposal 1721, we're at 1.3. We did receive an outsource quote. This quote was uh, developed based upon the same level of service that the current that the county is currently providing. Obviously, modifying level of service can modify your budget up or down depending upon what level of service you're looking to provide. Um, so the interesting thing um, as you go through, the outsource quote did not provide everything that the county currently provides for us. This company um, does, I believe it's Lee County Fields. They're well known. Um, they do a great job, but they're fields. They're not going to be doing our reservations for us. So um, the reservations team, yes, that was handled by the county. Yes, that's in our budget proposal 1721. No, that is not in this outsource quote. They're not going to handle any of the reservations. Uh, tournament support, yes, the county was doing that. The um, leagues could you know, they would prep and line the fields. The leagues could choose to purchase additional staff time or line the fields themselves, depending upon what they needed to do. Um, it, the same level of services within our budget proposal. There is not an option for that within this, um, this outsource quote. General repairs, yes, up to that cap that we talked about, that $6,000 cap. Um, yes, this would be identified in our our budget, we did use the numbers from the county of what they put into our parks within that cap to develop our budget proposal 1721. However, obviously, if there was a large capital repair, that would come separately. However, we did use the same um, general spending that the county has seen over the past few years to develop 1721. Um, that is not at all included in the um, annual budget here. That's first quote. Uh, the irrigation repairs, that is um, included, but again, not at all included here. So um, if we had anything beyond like a irrigation head issue, the outsource quote isn't going to manage that. Um, so materials, clay, paint, all of this, the chalk that we need, yes, that's included. Yes, that's included. No, that is not included in the outsource quote. Uh, mowing is included in all. 
Garbage removal is included in ours and the counties, and it is not included in the outsource quote. Um, for all these numbers that you see where I'm saying this is what we would anticipate the additional, these are the numbers exactly from what we budgeted. Um, so if it was not included here, we looked at what we said that we would need and just attributed the same amount of money um, just to keep things as, as apples to apples as possible. The um, restroom cleaning is not included in the outsource quote, and we do anticipate uh, about $25,000 there. Environmental park is not included. Um, so this is the cost to have mowing, um, some invasive removals, although we are looking to work with volunteer groups to help with those invasive removals, but that would they would not be going to the environmental park at all in the, this outsource quote. Um, the rental work, there is some rental work included with the county. We do have renovation work here. Um, and then this would be the cost for the city to provide. Um, Reno just, is uh, renovation. Renovation. And just a quick note on what that means. Um, after a long season of play, that is getting those fields back where they need to be. Um, Jeff has a great list of all of the things that are included. It is not like a complete rehabilitation. It's not turning the field over. It's not a capital project. It's just that that work to make sure that the root systems are good, to make sure that it's aerated and all of those items that need to happen to keep the field ready for next season. Hang on one second, guys. Hang on. Uh, if, City Clerk. If you could take a couple minute break, John is going to try and connect Commissioner Kerrison on her landline instead of her cell phone. If we could do that. All right, five minutes, John. Can I ask a question while we're on this I'm slide sorry. first? Can we finish up this slide okay. first? Okay, hang on one second. Yeah, John can do that without us breaking. It's, it's, it's just you might hear Commissioner Kerrison speaking when she answers the phone. All right, hang on one second. Commissioner Armitage, go ahead with your question. Since we're on this slide here. So what you're saying is on the outsource quote, it's at one million eight hundred thousand. But it's gonna they're they're not doing a bunch of stuff, but it's gonna cost us a half a million on top of the one point three that comes up to that one point eight. That is correct. Okay. I just don't understand why it's there. I know it's for our observation, but if we're looking at spending more and we can spend less in-house without the outsource and still get the same bang for the buck, that's, you know, the 1.3 is a lot less than 1.8. I would agree. We wanted to make sure that you saw we did our due diligence. I understand, and I and appreciate that, but I'm just saying it's... Options. Hold on, one at a time, guys. I'm, I'm just, I can't see <laughs> doing, doing what we would pay the 1.3 and then adding money to it. But... um. City manager. It, it was already answered. I was going to say because the comparison was asked for. So we want to show you both numbers. Thank you. Vice Mayor. There is a bottom line that we haven't got to. This is total additional cost. It's almost half a million dollars. Uh, that's only under the outsourced. So what is that that's not under county or city? That's designed to cover all the things that the outsourced company wouldn't do, like was mentioned, the scheduling. Um, the other items. Oh, that so that's totaling those individual ones. So you see that there's an additional almost half a million to it. Okay, that because I'm like, you add more to it. That's right, what thank I was you. Just explaining and talking to Apollo. Okay, yes. so no other questions on this slide 16? No, ma'am. Just... Five minute break, five minutes for them to change everything over. <clears throat> I didn't do it. Commissioner Amrich. It'll be six. Hold on. <laughs> okay, what's Reno? Well, if she's on, it's a quorum anyhow. No, we got to have it here. Right right right. No, we don't. It's it's not not that order. Order. Reno. Reno's on. Reno. So I was right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Bye-bye. Thank you. 
मिनट Oh yeah, you did talk to me. Did I basically? You want to tell me? I don't see it. Mm-hmm. All right, we got you this time. We're here. Much better. It's loud and clear. We'll put you on <laughs> mute until uh, until we're ready to start again. Thank you. Alrighty, so I believe technical issues have been resolved. Commissioner Carison, can you hear us? I can. Yay! Look at that. Thank you. That's a, that's our girl. Alrighty, thank you, staff, for helping get that resolved. Okay, so carrying on, uh, City Manager or Miss Tricia. All right, I will. Um, I don't believe there's any questions on slide 16. Is where we were at. Are we okay to move forward? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Great. Um, we are now looking at the org chart. A lot of work went into this with human resources to try to utilize positions that we currently have to avoid additional costs. So you do see some jockeying around, which is why during our budget workshop, there was a question is why are we removing one and adding one in? It's, it's just a move um, so that we could reposition existing where possible. Um, for this, the um, reservation team will have one staff assistant one, one staff assistant two, um, and one part-time staff assistant one. That is with a relocate a reclassification of a part-time rec attendant that's currently within our ranks to a full-time um, staff assistant. And then we'll to cover the uh, hours that were handled by that part-time rec attendant, we are looking to increase the solo other part-time rec attendant to a full-time rec attendant. It had been part of Park's plan to um, phase out the part-time rec attendants. So in this case, we're using that one to help fulfill the need in the reservation team. For the reservation team, we're looking to bring them on sometime after April 1st. That would give us the opportunity to 
report over all the information of the reservations that are currently be being taken by the county um, since they take reservations up to a year out and get them into our system properly. We have been working closely with the county during this time. We've done some test runs already. We have set up our system. However, there will be a transfer of data and some time to make sure that everything is appropriate and to train that team to make those lead contacts, um, to make sure that we're preparing for the next year's worth of reservations, but just to get them up and running on our systems. The field specialist team, we would have one field supervisor for athletic field specialist two and for athletic field specialist three. We did work hard to uh, make sure that they're utilizing shared equipment. So you'll see that the um, there's not a truck for each one. There's not a trailer for each one, um, especially if they're going to be at Atwater. They're using the shared equipment. The equipment at Naramore will be shared by many as well. I'm um, just really looking to bring on these there's additional 15,000 reservation hours with, um, with <clears throat> as little staff as possible. Question in regards to the equipment. Do you have equipment sheds at all of these parks currently? No, um, but there is equipment. We do feel that there's enough to store at Atwater and at Naramore. Naramore will kind of be a hub for other locations as well. Um, okay. So looking at that, that will also be where staffing is, and then there's some space at the parks maintenance building now. Um, not space for equipment, but space for staff. I have a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Emmerich. With your uh, staffing out at Atwater, um, I know when the county went out there and did it, it was basically a full-time job for a couple people. Mm -hmm. um, is that what you're expecting this yes. time? We so basically they wouldn't, they would just drive out there. They wouldn't even need, you know, like a vehicle or maybe a vehicle, but not multiple vehicles. Exactly. But, but that would be their work site to go to and, and report in. At. We have one vehicle there. And so more than anything, it's going to be to pull equipment on a trailer. Yeah, and, and that's what I meant. I was going to say none, but I meant you, mm -hmm. you got to at least have one and they may have to go get supplies and stuff. You need to not expect them to take mm -hmm. their personal vehicle. Supplies. But I'm just saying we don't need multiples. But with the equipment that's out there right now, is that gone or are we keeping it or are we looking to buy brand new equipment? That is a great question. So the county has been um, providing us information about what equipment is there. Um, some of the equipment is in fair, poor shape. Some is in good shape. Um, we have not been able to do an analysis to determine which pieces of equipment we would want to keep. Um, they do have a list for us. So we will work through that process. Um, in speaking with the uh, city manager and finance, currently the estimate within our budget proposal is for all the equipment we, we would need with the um, anticipation that some equipment from the county will come over to us in good shape. Um, now, some equipment from the county is shared at multiple locations. So um, even if they use it on our fields, it's not dedicated to our fields. So they are not going to be able to give that piece of equipment to us. Um, but there is some equipment that is, uh, we do have a list, we were in evaluation with that, we're working with Fleet to determine which pieces of equipment are in a condition that makes sense to bring them over. Okay, and this is for the city manager. If we are having, since we're taking this back over, since we are having to buy new equipment, can surtax funds be used for that? It's not a reoccurring purchase if we're right. starting out. If we buy it, yes. If we lease it, it's up for debate. Okay, well, no, I mean, sometimes it's better to own that equipment. We do currently have it budgeted within surtax. Okay, that's uh, just looking at funding as well, you Absolutely. know, because that's, that's a big piece of this pie. Just for the record, um, welcome, Commissioner Hanks and City Clerk. Did you capture his time? Thank you. Go ahead. No, I th that was it for now. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, did you have any questions on this? No. Commissioner um, Hanks, did you have questions on this? Commissioner Carasone? Not yet. Okay. Um, I see up at the very top where you have the broken line and it says communication support marketing outreach coordinator, the communication support staff graphic design specialist. Are those new positions because of this? No, those positions are existing. They just have a, a 
a broken line because they report through a different structure. However, they're in our, our budget okay. and have been for years. So those, those have not changed. So the grade broken line down below staff two, staff one, part-time staff. Those are new positions. Those the are gray new positions. positions are new positions. Where, if you look at the very bottom, increase a half a position, reclassify one part-time rec to a full-time rec attendant. Where's a full-time rec attendant on here? Uh, that one is just kind of lumped in here. It went to this one right there. So you, we didn't have a great way to show it and still fit on our, our spacing. Um, but there is a, an increase of a half of a rec attendant within that rec attendant four. The half of a rec attendant increase. And we also lost a half of a rec attendant. So it kind of. Gotcha. So basically what I'm seeing is three <coughs> brand new full-time positions. I'm sorry, what did you say? Three full-time staff assistant, one, two, or three positions. For the reservation team, yes. And then one part-time for the reservation team. So I'm sorry, we have a full-time staff assistant one, a full-time staff assistant two, and a part-time staff assistant one for the reservation team. The idea is the, um, the part-time position would be able to possibly handle weekends so that we have that level of customer service. Um, the staff assistant will be doing, um, you know, they'll be doing the reservations, they'll be purchasing uh, whatever they need to do to make sure that the reservations are going through. Um, they'll be managing the irrigation, putting everything in the system. That's the reservation team. On the other side of the house, you have the field supervisor, the eight athletic field specialists, and then you have that staff assistant too. That staff assistant too is currently a part-time position that works with park maintenance. However, we anticipate there being um, a lot more purchasing required so that we can get the clay and the paint and the chemicals um, and that position increases in order to be able to manage all of the needs that those that team is going to have to properly address the fields. The field supervisor be able to do that? The field supervisor is going to be doing a lot of work though as well. So they're going to be going to all the fields. They're going to be um, the tech, some of the technical things. Um, <coughs> these people are, they're on site. They're, they're working positions. Um, the, Staff assistant is really the person that works all through the purchasing. So if we had a, um, if we needed to do a bid for chemicals, the staff assistant throughout the city are the people that really work through those uh, purchasing documents and making sure that we get the insurance and all of those papers that need to happen. So who does the purchasing for the aquatics chemicals? Who does the purchasing for the other requirements for facilities maintenance that you guys take care we of. We have a staff assistant too currently in place at uh, the Morgan Center that is doing a lot of that work. We also have a part-time staff assistant one um, that is doing the work currently for park maintenance. The they're they're working at a high capacity at this point. So the staff assistant two that's currently at the recreation team, all the special events, the bands um, anything that we need to purchase for the the um, the gym, the contract for the uh, basketball risers, making sure that a lot of these things are happening, that's already on that staff assistant two's desk. The staff assistant one that's with park maintenance is doing chemicals, uh, making sure that we have mower pieces, all of those pieces and parts currently needed to keep that team moving. Just... I, I got another question Go if ahead, you're done, Commissioner ma'am. Um, you, have, you have some people in-house, and I, I seen it maybe about a year ago or whatever. They went up to the Braves and had some field training and stuff like that. I know you were looking forward and, and ahead of times coming into here. I'm assuming they'll have the, uh, the opportunity to go ahead and, and possibly apply for some of these positions as well if they would rather do that work than just regular ground maintenance they'd be welcome to apply and um, also under under these different it says athletic field specialists is, is one of those or more of those individuals are they going to be tasked with the irrigation out there 
Because that's one hell of an irrigation system that's out there. Yes, irrigation, spray tech, the, there'll be specialized position, positions within there, specialized certifications that will be needed, especially within the athletic field specialist three to manage those uh, unique systems. Yeah, because I know at first installation, we had some doozies or some problems out there and it, it takes time. It's, it's, it's a hell of a system. Now, with all these positions here, is that included in that $1.3 million proposal? That includes all these positions and all those salaries? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lynch. Did you have any vice mayor? Commissioner Carasone, are you still with us? I am. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. I, I have a couple others, but I'll let you proceed with your presentation about that one slide. So um, as a comparison, since FY21 will be a short year for us, you see that um, a large portion of that cost is the um, equipment, which is calculated within surtax. Um, so the personnel and the operating costs are significantly less, being that their you know, staff will start in April or in June, depending upon their position. Um, and then the actual takeover of the fields and the parks wouldn't happen until the beginning of July. Um, but for the next year, just to show where we're at, um, this would be the complete personnel and operating that we anticipate for FY22. Um, here's an equipment overview since uh, we have been talking about this. And again, um, we will look to see what equipment is available from Sarasota County so that we can reduce this cost. Um, but anticipating that these, this is our need, um, we have looked at leasing it, um, purchasing it. We've been working with Fleet to determine what the pricing would be and what the best options would be. Um, as city manager mentioned, currently this is budgeted within surtax. It is open for debate at this point whether or not a lease of equipment can be charged to surtax. Um, so that would definitely weigh in as to um, whether a lease would be the best option. I mean, well, I'm I looking. Hold on, hold on. Let me call on you. <laughs> Vice Mayor. I'm looking at the list and the difference between the price and the lease. That's for the lease is for four years but the useful life is six. You know, for an example, that first line. So when you're finished with the lease, you don't get anything for it. It can't be continued in use somewhere else. It's turned back to the leaseor. Uh, you're done with it. You then have to go into another contract two years before it's hit its useful life, paying again more. So in my opinion, looking at this, leasing is not necessarily the cheaper way to go. There's always options um, with all the leases. Sometimes there's an option to buy. Each one depends on how the contract is structured. Um, not a huge fan of leasing either because it just means you have recurring debt and not a big fan of debt. And since there's not a significant difference in the two options, like you're, you're mentioning, you still have useful life. There are pros and cons to go in both directions. Um, the one nice thing about buying it is should there be a loss of, of revenue, um, like when we had the recession, you own it. And so you can maybe stretch it out a little ways, whereas if you have a lease, you have to make that payment, which means that's something you can't eliminate out of the budget. And even if they, you have the option to buy at the end of it, you're still paying more Correct. To, to have it for its useful life. To me, it makes more sense to put less than, I mean, about 90000 more and own it and have that useful life. That's my opinion. Mr. Emmerich. Yeah, on this, it's down under vehicles and trailers. I'm assuming that's three trailers that you're looking for and four trucks that you're looking for? Yes. Okay, and it says F-250 trucks, two shared by two crews. How many people are in a crew? But you're getting four trucks. We're, it's two, two people in a crew. We'll also need um, one for the supervisor. He doesn't need no 250. To pull the equipment that we're looking to pull, 
We have been advised by fleet that that is the proper size truck based upon the towing capacity required and making sure that they can stop appropriately as well. Right, but I thought you said the supervisor wasn't going to be doing that type of work. No, I said the supervisor would be out doing that kind of work. Um, the question was regarding whether or not the supervisor would be doing the purchasing paperwork of a staff assistant too. The supervisor will be out doing work. And okay. we'll need occasionally to bring equipment back and forth to fields um, to be maintained. So, you know, you want your equipment to be able to do all the things you may need it to do. Right, and I, I understand that. It's just this this might be some of the areas that, that we look at come budget because what I'd like to see when you come back is what equipment you're proposing here and what equipment you already have, not counting the county stuff, you know, in comparison to any of this equip, equipment. The, the equipment we currently have is in play to do what we're currently doing. So this is a brand new um a brand new level of service, a brand new workload. We um, we really don't have extra equipment to divert to doing this and still being able to maintain the parks that we're currently maintaining. Um, there's not extra trucks laying around. Fleet makes very sure that we're using our equipment the way we need to use our oh, equipment. And I understand that, but here, here we're looking at taking over some stuff and you're talking about taking over just the volleyball courts at Dallas White Park. That's really not going to hinder you anything whatsoever by over there, except for maybe having to go back once or twice, or whoever's doing it at the time could be checking those same areas. And I think there might be some overlap in this, looking at some of these different things. We fully anticipate being able to absorb um, Dallas White Park, uh, Marina Park, and running out to Myakahatchee Creek and managing the contractors for that. Um, this is really the equipment to um, utilize to make sure that for Atwater, Naramore, Butler, Larry Tennyson Fields, that we're able to pull equipment from the sheds since they can't be stored at all locations, that we have um, the crews that are able to go out and do the work that's necessary at this current level of service. Um, so this is not, um, this is the equipment based upon meeting with the county meeting with the West Coast Turf, evaluating it with fleet. This is the equipment that would be needed to handle what we are getting back from the county, working hard to absorb what we can within our current team. All right, I still, okay, so then basically I'll, I'll ask you when you bring this back into budget, when we're talking about budget, then are you gonna have any of that equipment assessed by the county on what you think you're going to have for next year or no? Are we just going to write everything off right now and start new? What are, what are we looking at there is what I'm asking. We have um, a list of equipment, so it will need to be evaluated um, to determine if it's equipment that will come over. Right now, at this point, we've been directed to budget the full amount in surtax, and then as we go through the year um, and we determine, you know, it's, it's a year away. Will that equipment still be in good shape in a year? Will it still be the right equipment? Will the county still be able to give it to us? Um, that's a lot to consider. So at this time, with the direction is to budget for the whole amount of what we need, and then we'll work diligently to remove costs as appropriate with equipment that's evaluated um, by fleets and by our team to make sure it's the right equipment and that we're not getting a piece of equipment that's going to cost us so much more um, to maintain and to bring up. And, and I understand all that, but this whole package is is big money, and we gotta we gotta save wherever we can, and that's what we're looking at as well. So I'd just like to have more information on this equipment. That's all. At a later date, Vice Mayor, uh, what about the clay and chemicals and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, is that being left by them? Or do we? Did you figure all of the, that type of stuff into this budget? We there will be some supply left. Um, we took their annual numbers for what they purchase for clay because you, you're always buying these things. So we took those numbers. We evaluated it based upon the pricing that we're able to get, um, the pricing for chemicals that we're able to get. So we are looking at how much would we need 
potentially for those three months and really how much are we going to need annually is really based upon what the county is showing us year after year the use and the cost thank you you I heard that Myakkahatchee Creek Environmental Park, the Marina Park, Dallas White, and will be absorbed by our existing contractors. Um, I meant to say it would be absorbed by our existing staff, and that staff would go out and manage the contractors. Um, so for I, Myak I, Okay. What contractors are you talking about? Are we getting contractors to do those other three fields? I mean, those other three locations? My Akihachi Creek is a specialized location. We do not currently have um, that kind of staff. The county also manages that via contractor. Um, it is, um, we're utilizing the same model as the county has used uh, to manage that park. So it's the invasive removal, although we would work to get um, volunteer days and whatnot to reduce that cost. Uh, but we are following the same model as the county for Myakkahatchee Creek. However, we would have staff go out um, and manage the uh, walk the park, making sure it's in good shape, and do the after reservations um, at the primitive camping and things of that nature. So that would be the staff side of it. Um, but then there would still be a contractor for the restroom cleaning um, and for um, some of the trail mowing. And where is the contractor's costs in any of these numbers? It's in the budget within 3,400. So it is in there. And if you if you look, if I go back to this slide, um, Myakkahatchee Creek Environmental Park is the fourth from the bottom. It is included here at $13,200 is within our budget. Um, contracted services, that would be an additional cost because it's not covered within the outsource. So, we did talk about it briefly here. That is something that the county currently outsources. Is that the only park they outsource? They outsource bits and pieces of, of a lot of different things. Um, again, Mayor? capital projects. Hang on one second, I'll get right to you in a minute, Commissioner Carousel. Yep. Um, capital projects uh, would be something that they outsource. This number down here includes that outsource contract costs. So it is as close to possible as a like to like. And you're considering continuing those types of contracts with what they have. Same, just same level copying, of service. Copying what they're doing. Same level of service, just thank you. Are you finished, Grace Mayor? Yeah. Commissioner Carrison, go ahead, please. Yes, I'd like to get some sort of a, some sort of a, sheet that says what exactly being contracted out versus being handled inside and what are those fees for both if you look at the um the detailed budget um the proposed detailed sheet really the contracted services is in the line item for 3400 which is on page three um, so you'll see where are you talking it's about in the budget. Um, I believe everybody received the the Gov Max report that says at the top proposed detailed sheet for fiscal year 2021. And if you go to page three, it does show the that is contracted services, and it does show what we're thinking would be contracted out. Um, so you'll see that the cleaning services. Uh, there's specialty field maintenance, irrigation repairs that would be above our team's ability, um, landscape services and maintenance at Myakkahatchee Creek Environmental Park, and then specialty ground maintenance such as pond dredging um, that's required at Atwater so we can use that water that's there, um, saves us money in water. But that is where you'd see the, the proposed outsourced items. I'm assuming you're talking about the uh, agenda backup that says proposed detail sheet? Yes, ma'am, page three. Okay, okay. And page three has the interlock, interlocal transition, and then it has other, I don't see where you're saying what the contract um, so out I'm, in house. On page three, if you go down, I don't know, about a third of the way, you'll see the account number 
3038572 those are contracted services and then it says other contracted services and then it breaks out what items we're looking to obtain a contractor to assist um, either they're beyond the scope of our typical um, staff responsibilities um, or following suit with how we provide other services at this time. I see other contracted services. That's what you're talking about where it talks about cleaning service, so on and so forth? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so now my question is, have we looked at how it could be handled in-house? You broke up, Commissioner Carroll. <coughs> Can we look at how this is handled in-house? If there is a cost comparison that you know we would save, I mean, I can't imagine why you have to have contracted services to clean a bathroom. Uh, Commissioner Carazone, the that was brought up during the budget workshops that we had, and we have put together um, a memo addressing all those items that were brought up for Parks and Recreation Department, and an analysis on the. Uh, cleaning of the restrooms and the trash removal was provided to us by Public Works Operations. And so that is in that packet, um, I believe, is going out to commission um, with the city manager report. I'm not sure when that's when it's going out, but it's the response to all the budget questions. And so there's an analysis that Public Works did showing what it would cost to do that in-house versus contracted. They had already Thanks. done that. This service used to be provided through Public Works, it got transferred to Parks because we have right. the bulk of the need for um, the cleaning and trash pickup. And so that's why it was in our budget, but they provided the analysis on that. So we will receive that later? Mm -hmm. Soon, like budget time? Yes. You'll budget have workshops or prior to budget workshops? We'll have it out to you before the budget workshops, but it's that's where you'll discuss it. Before next week. Thank you. Commissioner Carrison, did that answer your question? It did. I'm just a little concerned. We had road and or public works together the outsourcing calculations. Parks actually doing the work. How is it? Shouldn't we be looking at our people that work in parks? If there's a way that they can afford to take the time to do some of these task duties. There is an evaluation of the cost to have staff do it, um, and then the evaluation of available staff time has also been completed. But in that backup, you'll see information about specifically the costs. And that um, based upon that cost calculation, it made more sense to continue with an outsource relationship. For cleaning the bathroom. Yes. Um, and then will this be broken down into where and what as far as ability? So, for instance, uh, the county takes care of West White. What is it being taken care of through county employees versus outsourcing? We have some general information on what is being handled by county employees versus outsourcing. Um, and that is in the um, back, some of the backup information. The county has really provided us more information about what their total costs are. And we have used that as a comparison to develop our total costs based upon the same level of service, evaluating whether it would make sense to contract that out. Um, that's why there's an outsource quote, quote in there as well or as um, to bring on staff to do this maintenance at this level of service. So then, so then it's not true that we know exactly what it is that they're contracting out versus doing in-house and what those cost comparisons are if you're not getting that information from the county. We understand what the level of service is, what the amount of work is. We spent a lot of time with the county obtaining that information. We took that and evaluated it as to whether or not the city felt it was necessary to do it as a contracted service or if it could be managed in-house with appropriate staff. Evaluated okay. that based upon the cost for current contracts 
and then developed our budget proposal with line items for each one of those services. At this time, we have outlined the four or five services that we feel would need to be contracted services based upon staff time, um, a benefit of cost analysis, and then um, also whether or not we would have staff that have the skill set for some of these things and if it would be beneficial to hire staff with those skill sets or if it would be more beneficial to just um, utilize a contractor as needed for those specialty skills. Okay, so that's not what was said 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry, Commissioner Carason, I didn't hear that last question or statement. I said that was not what was said 20 minutes ago. It was said that we were going to do the same exact thing the county for contracting out versus in-house employees. And if we don't have that information, we're only making an analysis. That concerns me. I apologize for any uh, misunderstanding. I was talking specifically about Myakahatchee Creek Environmental Park when I made that comment about contracting out. We are following the county with contracting out at Myakahatchee Creek Environmental Park because we do not have specialized staff for um, the trail maintenance within our ranks. Um, the county does not have specialized staff with trail maintenance within the ranks that were available in Northport. So that is the route that they took. It works for us in this particular case. Each location we went through with the county based upon current level of service, um, on-site meetings, evaluations of annual reports and costs, evaluated those per location as to what made sense for our staff and our needs. And that is what is within Budget Proposal 1721. Okay. Is that all, Commissioner Carason? For now, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Mayor? I just want to state that the first year going into something, I think it would behoove us to copy what the county is doing until we have a year to get into it, see how it goes, and then we can swing, you know, from contract to in-house or something at that point in time when you have some actual data of your own that's detailed. So I think it's better to copy initially what they're doing. Uh, Commissioner Hanks. Would we be piggybacking off the contractor the county uses? Would that no? We wouldn't be able to do that. That's not for the um, Myakatchee Creek Environmental Park, or for well, which? I mean, for you know, for everything that they have on contract. Would we be? We would have to work with purchasing to determine whether or not that contract can have a piggyback on it, um, or if purchasing would require us to go out separately um, to get a competitive quote. Thank you. Commissioner Rich. Yeah, um, back on the equipment again. This, I'm going, I'm there, going with you. <laughs> there's, there's just some things here, and, and, and this may be just a suggestion or whatnot, because, I, yes, it is uh, specialty equipment, but some of the equipment that I'm looking at here, and it's only a couple items. Once One is a swath aerator, and one's the uh, verticut dethatch. Now, I know back when that came online, we only dethatched de that thing like maybe once or twice a year. It was after the leagues were done. You may want to look at a possibility of just renting that equipment for a couple of weeks, schedule it, and you're in and you're out. And you, you may be saving, you know, a few dollars until the following year if we see a bigger need because we can use it in different areas. I would just caution when we're looking at all this equipment, I, I'm, I'm not still sold on a one shop buying spree right now, you know, and, and I'm looking to save some money. And if that, that can, that if we just rented those two pieces of equipment twice a year, that's saving close to $70,000 on your $1.3 million proposal here. You know, it's, it may be just a little whittling away, but it may help. So that's what I would suggest when you look at these equipment. See, see how much they're going to be used. Is it, you know, a 100% need, or is there something that can fill in the gaps for the time being? Go ahead, Commissioner Carason. It's based on the equipment conversation. I thought that in the last years, 
we've done capital improvements and positions based on the idea that this is something we'd have to take over. We have not purchased any equipment or done um, any major capital repairs to the fields um, based on this uh, expiration of the interlocal. The dock at Marina Park was completed. However, that um, is, is relatively separate. Let me rephrase. The last two years, we have been given proposed budgets. In those proposed budgets, Brooks and Rex said certain things need to either be uh, purchased or new hires, whatever they may be. And it was always with the reasoning that we'd have to be taking over our park. So the question is, what are those? Purchasing and budgeting are different. We understand that. But what are the things that we've already budgeted for over the last years? And where are we at with them? They're conferring. OK, thank you. The, the items we've purchased over the last few years had nothing to do with the inner local. They had to do with um, parks maintenance and property maintenance, and they've just been split up. But those were replacement items. They had nothing to do with taking over for the inner local. Did you hear, Commissioner Carasone? I heard. I feel like years we've certain things purchased. So I'll have to look. Are you good? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple questions. Uh, uh, this equipment breakdown, and you're saying you know you need this grounds master that multi pro. I, I have no clue what that equipment is, so I'm going to have to defer to Commissioner Emmerich, who seems to be extremely knowledgeable about that. But I will be doing my Google searches in the meantime. But if I'm going down to the vehicles and trailers, and this was one of my questions, and I know Commissioner Emmerich kind of touched on it, and you said that the supervisor is going to need a F-250 and a trailer. Is that correct? He'll or she'll need an F-250. Um, the trailers, they go between equipment. So we're asking for four vehicles and three trailers. We're bringing on nine staff members. Okay. Why would a supervisor have to be hauling the equipment that the crew brought out to wherever the area is that he's working? They're working it. Why would why would the supervisor have to do that? Because if you unless the supervisor is going to be taking the equipment and doing work himself or herself um, at a different location, why would that equipment be someplace else to begin with. I, I, um, we only have two locations to store equipment. It's Atwater and Naramore. So we're going to be pulling equipment from Atwater and Naramore to Butler, uh, Larry Thennison, um, even just from, um, you know, just around the location. So, and, and um, But Dallas, don't the crews go with the equipment to operate the equipment? They do. The supervisor will be an on-hand supervisor, not in um, sitting behind a desk supervisor. This will be somebody that's working with the crew. Um, also, if you need to um, rent a piece of equipment, if you need to... Um, what equipment are... Of, wait, wait, sorry. What equipment are we renting if we're buying that whole list? Um, there are <laughs> specialty equipment pieces that um, we potentially would need if it was a big repair or something of that nature. Um, or if you're bringing a piece of equipment in to be... Uh, fixed or for maintenance, um, and you want your crew to be working, or the availability of having a F-250 with a trailer so that this position can do any of those things far outweighs the savings for not having an F-250 based upon conversations with fleets. They also recommend that our trucks can be interusable. So if one truck is down, um, you know, maybe the supervisor doesn't use his truck that day and the crew member uses it. It would still need to be an F-250 to pull the equipment that's required. Okay. And earlier you said that each crew is two people. So Usually that um, it's a two-person crew. 
Okay, so two people on a crew and you're hiring eight athletic field specialists. So that's four crews. And one supervisor. And one supervisor. But you only have, you have four crews that are gonna be moving equipment, but you only have three trailers. How's the fourth crew getting their equipment? So some of the equipment is on site. Um, so Butler, Atwater, and Naramore have equipment that are on site. We're working really hard not to purchase a trailer for each truck. We're working really hard not to purchase a truck for each staff member. Looking at where we can find efficiencies based upon what we have, what will be on site, and what needs to move, knowing that the equipment at Atwater won't need to move as much as the equipment at Naramore because it's going to Butler, it's going to Daryl White, it's going to Larry T. Um, just making sure that we have the capacity to move this heavy equipment around. Do you have anything? Uh, and, and, Commissioner Armitage, go ahead, please. And just to add on that, you do have storage at Butler as well. There's a building there, it used to be my office, between the Morgan Center and the fields. Is that building still there? The county used it. The, um, the league is using that as storage, that, that building? Still a city building. Uh, yes, the league is using that as storage and as a concession at this point. Um, there's not really storage for equipment there. If that's the building you're talking about. Um, we ran our whole maintenance crew out of that building. I think that that has been that's modified. Been I'll go back that really there. quick so we can see Butler. Are you talking no. about this building at the top right here? That's a concession stand. No, 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 no. It's back here. It's right here. I can't show you, but I can show you. Um, down. So this keep, is keep coming towards. Go through that little lazy river the there. That are by the parking lot. Go through here. Yeah. So this is our, our new restroom building. Okay. It's our restroom concession building. Here's a restroom building, and here's the league concession building. Okay. The one, the the other one down there, that's where, right there was where my office was, right this in there. Is, this is a new restroom concession building. I don't believe the building you're talking about exists. It still exists. It does not exist. This is a restroom concession building. That's what I'm saying. But we had a building right there that we held all of our equipment in. It, okay. It was, it was, it was demolished and this and is that's, the that's fine. I haven't been over and looked at it. But. Okay. Come visit. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah so that was demolished when this um, went from being softball, baseball to uh, football. Okay. Multi-purpose. And, and that was part of your process fixing all that area over there. So yes. yep, it's been a while since I've been there. All right. I think that was it that I had until something else pops in my head. Anybody else have any questions on this equipment overview? No, but I got several right. statements, questions yeah. overall. Um, all right, guys, it is 1030. We did our presentation. We kind of touched on some of the questions. Um, you guys want to take a 10 minute break before we get into the meat and potatoes of questions, comments, I do. discussion? Commissioner Hanks. Yeah. Okay, let's let's take 10 minutes. We'll get back here at 1045, and then hopefully we'll be able to wrap everything up by lunch, um, if that's possible. I, I don't know what's going to happen. So let's take a break and go from there. Thank you.
Alrighty, guys, it's 1045. We're back after our break, and we will go ahead and entertain questions and comments. Um, just for the sake of everybody, Commissioner Carison, are you back in the house? I am here. Thank you. I'm sorry? I'm here. I Thank you. Leave. Alrighty. Um, I sent a question to the city manager by email. <laughs> I don't know that I can pull it up for everybody to see. Um, the email was just to understand the two buildings that we have used for property storage at Naramore Fields are shown in the pictures attached. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to know if they're both demolished and when and why. At Naramore Fields? There are, there are maintenance things yeah, over there. There are, and we anticipate using those. Those have not been demolished. We were talking about Butler. Okay, sure. that's Just what I was trying. About Butler. Thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, uh, Vice Mayor, I know you have questions, so go ahead, please. Fighting at the bullet, and not really all of them questions. And I'll proceed this with telling staff nothing that I'm going to say is because of you guys or the work that you're forced to do. I'm very upset that we as a commission asked for a joint meeting with the Sarasota County mm -hmm. Commissioners to discuss this, and we never got it. COVID came about through a monkey wrench and in everything. We still don't have that joint meeting. In my opinion, they need to carry this contract through this fiscal year and allow us to have that joint commission before dumping it on our city. They're dumping it out on all municipalities, not just our city, but it is our city that I care about. Uh, I look back at the 19, well, I didn't look at the 93 one as much as I did the 96, but, or excuse me, 06, but in 06, I believe it went from nine parks to 10, correct? I believe so. From 10 to 9. 10 to 9, 10 to nine. Yes. okay. Uh, but it, I didn't see anywhere in that 2006 contract where the intent was just to do away with taking care of parks in the municipalities. Nowhere does it say that. In fact, I've got highlighted three areas where it talks about uh, 12 months and October 1st. And so they, they think the dis dissolution of uh, this contract is the end of June when it went you know, into effect. It said when the last signature goes in place. But every point in the contract where it talks about it being dissolved talks about uh, October 1st. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how they're trying to close it at this early point anyhow. Uh, we go back in history and look at uh, that third tax exemption that was gonna be coming about. It gave a loss to the city, or was potentially a loss to the county of 5.5 .5 million. So cut the budget. Oh, heaven forbid, we can't raise the taxes 0 0.10 to take care of everything. Drop everything, get rid of it pull that budget down so that we don't have an increase. So what do you do? Take park and rec, rate out for the cities, that's making your money. But it's not helping the taxpayer because it's their money that's paying, whether it's the county or the city, but your taxes haven't gone down in the county, they've stayed the same, and now you're gonna to have to pay for it in the city. But you don't have to take the blame what the cities have. Exactly. So what, what they've done is shuffled stuff around, left it on the backs of the tax pay, taxpayers, and I don't like that. I don't think that's unfair that, uh, or fair that we didn't get to sit and talk to those commissioners. We asked in the joint meeting that we had that we have it within three to six months, Correct. and we haven't had it. Nowhere do I see the intent, and that's one of the reasons I want to Commissioner Carazone on this call because she was in office during that 2006 contract 
and I don't see where they're wanting to get rid of taking care of parks. In fact, it states that they will take care of those nine, but if the city adds any other parks, then we would take on that obligation. But I don't see where, I mean, they're leaving it open for a 10 or a five year extension or that, so if you want to redo the contract, you can, but it's not saying that our intent is never to take care of your parks again. I would like to sit down with them and talk with them. First of all, I would like them to extend it to October 1st, and we don't have to look at any of this being added to our budget this year. If we do have to have something, you know, taking it over, it can be a compromise. I mean, we could do the soft part of doing the scheduling. They could do the hard part of continuing the maintenance. There could be something that would give and take to both parties in this contract. But we're not allowed the opportunity to speak. It's just, nope, there you go. We're saving you know, close to $2 million you know, heading out to Northport. So I asked, how much money does Northport pay the county? I received that this morning. We pay $15 million in our taxes in this city to the county. They're putting 1.3 or whatever into our parks. We have mosquito control. Uh, they handle some 911 calls for fire. Um, can anybody else help me what we have dog collector, dog thing? But they don't break down how much they have, they spend out in each of the municipalities. They have how much they take in from us. We pay about 8% of it, you know, because the county's wider or bigger, so the county taxpayers pay more than what the residents here. But we keep increasing the payment because our city is growing. But yet, with this, the same acreage of mosquito control, it's the same amount of land being covered for the dog people or animal control. I don't see where, I see the money going to the county raising, but I don't see the level of service changing and they can't even provide to us. But it is changing. What the, We're exactly. getting less. In, in, a, in a sense, yes, because they're shoving the parks and rec over to us. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we ask this of the hospital, our community hospital, we ask this of them to produce to us how their indigent care, our money, is being spent on indigent care. We never got it. My question that was asked was, can't break it down. We don't, we don't break down how much it goes. I want to know how the hell somebody does a budget. Yeah, I said hell. Does a budget <laughs> without knowing what rev income and output is. How do, you, how do they know that the taxation that they're putting upon all of us is even worthy? I don't get that. So am I upset? Yeah, I am. Because I don't think it's right. These ladies and gentlemen have been busting their butts trying to take over something that's being forced upon us. And I don't like it. Do I have to prepare for it? Yes, I do, because those governments that are above us can cram anything down our throats that they want to. So yes, we have to look at this and we have to prepare if it is fully shoved down our throat. But I would personally like to see our city manager going to the county administrator asking could this contract be extended to the end of this fiscal year so that there can be a joint meeting before all of this is finalized. Thank you. Mayor. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Carrison. So to answer some of the things that uh, Commissioner Luke, so eloquently, there was never an to dissolve this agreement. Uh, this all stemmed from a full taxation issue that spans way beyond any of our recollection. But in 2000, 
the two chairs of the two boards negotiated the terms of the contract you're looking at behind closed doors. I was adamantly against I was against the term, I was against the manner, and it was a four to one vote. And you can bet who was with that said, there was supposed to be a renegotiation because both the county and the city understood there were new parks coming in. The aquatic center, Atwater Park, Splash Pad, and much more. And that's why there was talks renegotiating this at the end of the term. I want to also on the that we asked for that meeting over a year ago. October 2nd. Well, COVID didn't strike until a few months ago. March. So I can't even blame that. But that's not the first year we've had. Let's not forget, this has been a four year issue. I personally believe they need to stick with what they're doing, renegotiate the contract that exists, and stop this. Because we're already paying taxes for this. Or they're going to have to start giving some money back, one or the other. Because I'm sick of having presidents pay twice. Bottom line. I'm done. Thank you, Commissioner Carson. Mayor. May I, I um, speak to the term issue brought up by the vice mayor just yeah, for clarification? Because I have that in my. The agreement was entered into on June 20th, 2006. And in section three, it provides that it shall be for 10 years and then it shall be automatically renewed for an additional five years. So the agreement expires automatically on June 20th, 2021. Now, also in that section, there is some reference to October 1st. That is if someone, if one of the parties, were to try to terminate the agreement early, it would be terminated on the date of October 1st. But we're not looking at an early termination at this point. We are looking at the, the term expiring as defined in the contract. So the contract expires on June 20th, 2021. I hope that that helps. Does that make sense? It does, but uh, on page 6 of 15, um, it talks again, commencing October 1st, 2007, in an amount uh, equal to the CPI for the prior 12-month period. On page 15 of 15, there's an uh, Exhibit C. Again, the county shall be responsible for repairs to the park facilities in amount not to exceed 5,000 per park per year, adjusted annually commencing October 1st, 2007, in an amount equal to the CIP, so over for a 12 month period. So for over and over in this, uh, not just in the term section, you know, term of agreement section, which is section three. Uh, I mean, again, when, when they're trying to cancel this, they're canceling it at the end of the fiscal year. But yet, we're arranging something in the middle of a budget year, and they're just handing it over. Um, to me, it flies in the face of what's written. Anybody? Mayor? Yeah, I, I hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Commissioner Carasone, and then I'll go to Commissioner Emmerich. I think I understand what the attorney is trying to say is that it's that the entire um, agreement will be null and void at that time, and there'll be nothing to replace it. So I think what I'm understanding is that our only option is to allow it to continue and uh, void it out and plan for take for our, on our own. Or B, write a letter to the county 
stating that we would like to renegotiate prior to end of this agreement immediately, actually. Or, or maybe in conjunction with that letter, find out how a dual taxation loss would actually um, be affected in this case or not. Those are the three junctures I can see. But I, I mean, I just don't, uh, if you're only thinking that we've paid 15 million, but yet they can't break down how those services are being given to us, I would say that there's reason for uh, full taxation suit, especially in their constitutional obligation of parks. So let's uh, look into that as well. Mayor, I do believe we asked staff at one point to look into dual taxation. I think are you are you all finished, Commissioner Carousel? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Hanks. Yeah, I do believe Sorry. that we asked staff to look into dual taxation before. Um, I think it was more in reference to the hospital, but I don't see where this would really uh, uh, be that much different. Do we have an answer towards that? I mean, do we have any kind of, just just as a reminder? It has been a minute, um, but I did do a uh, make presentation up on the computer, but I verbally made a presentation to the commission based on the history of the city and the county's litigation regarding double taxation. And in that litigation, the court found there was no double taxation with respect to parks. That is the overview of my recollection. Uh, I'll be happy to pull the information again or pull the meeting reference if you all want to want to review the presentation if you'd like what then hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on <coughs> did that answer your question commissioner yeah I, yeah if uh, you wouldn't mind i would like to just take a look at that again okay. I, I think it's worth re-looking into all right and if you could send that to all of the commissioners thank you all right commissioner emrich has uh, Vice Mayor and Commissioner Carasone have spoke a couple of times. Commissioner Emmerich has been well, very patient. this is in reference to what I, she said. You can let her speak, that's fine. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. That opinion or whatever was given out may be overall, but especially this year, we already paid our taxes to the county. Mm -hmm. Now the taxpayer is going to have to pay again this year for the services coming over for okay. July, August, and September. So there's no way about it. That is double taxation for, for that. Thank you. Commissioner Carison, did you have anything on this particular <coughs> item or can Commissioner Emmerich ask his questions or make his statement? It was based on the, um, if I remember correctly, it was on a historical documentation of the 1970s law that the dual tax that was presented. And I believe that we reached an agreement, and therefore that's why it went away. That's, that's I remember. Correct. It is correct that it was based off of the old right. field ordinances, or you know, it, was, it was an older lawsuit, but it was not because we reached an agreement. There was a, a judgment put into place um, that that related to several of the taxation issues and found there was no double taxation with respect to those. There were a couple where there, there was still an outstanding issue related to double taxation that the parties may have entered an agreement about, but the parks was not, was not part of that. Thank you. Yeah, it was transportation impact fees and something else. Uh, but I think it's worthy of looking at where we stand here and now. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. That's it. All right, Commissioner Emmerich, your turn to make comment or question or. Oh, well, I have a question. <clears throat> um, how many parks within the city limits of Northport are considered regional parks? Zero. Zero. See, I knew that. I just wanted confirmation. 
because what I'm hearing about this whole process is basically the county is cutting out a lot of the parks and the municipalities, but they will still be taking care of regional parks. So what gets me is we have nothing in Northport, so we're not going to get any of that benefit. But hey, a lot of the stuff up in Sarasota, and I know there's a regional park over in Inglewood, which is, I believe, their sports complex, which they're lucky to have. It's, it's a good park. But what really gets me is where this money is going to be focused on. I don't believe that Benderson Park up there is going to miss a moment whatsoever. And I, and, and I think we're going to be paying for that because that is a Sarasota County-owned park. So you just look at who's in charge and what's getting done, and I think we're getting the shaft. And, and I think we're getting it big time. So I just wanted that on the record as well. So. Can I piggyback a question to what sure. you I had something else that was going to come out, but I squirreled. What, what's the definition that they give you for a regional park? Because we have several parks that have tournament play that brings people in from all over the state. So mm -hmm. what's their definition? Uh, within the county's master plan, and I'm paraphrasing, it is um, that patrons would drive greater than half an hour, and it's typically greater than 100 acres. Um, so Atwater is just about 47 acres. Um, Myakahatchee Creek is over 100 acres. Uh, but based upon that definition, we don't have parks that they deem as regional parks. We don't have what? Parks that they deem as regional parks. Oh, I remember what I wanted to ask. Too. Go ahead. Um, and this is probably to the city manager. I was talking about the meetings with the county. And when we did ask about it a few months ago, didn't you get a response on saying that they were willing to meet, but they wanted to meet after the election? Mm -hmm. That's that's what I thought I heard. Yes. So it's pretty much to summarize what everybody said. Yes, you all had a joint meeting. Yes, it was said that the their, their elected body agreed to a future joint meeting in three to six months. Yes, COVID came and destroyed all of that possibility. Um, I spoke to the county administrator, um, I don't know, a month or so ago about getting that meeting scheduled when we were all going through the reopening phases. And at that point in time, it was stated that, you know, the meeting would not happen until after November, probably the first of the year. Just wanted that on the record, yep. too. Thank you. So, since we're talking about the meeting back on October 2nd, we all agreed, a city manager said, <clears throat> that we would meet in three to six months. Zoom meetings have become normal. Zoom meetings are a viable option. So right now, I am hearing excuses as to why they're not meeting. And now they're going to wait until after the election. Meanwhile, we have to get this budget in place for fiscal year 2021, and we still don't have a meeting. We don't know if we could sit here and negotiate a new contract because we're not wanting to cancel, they are. We are paying money to the county that we aren't getting any services for. They're not doing anything in the city of Northport in relation to our parks. We don't have a regional park here. It doesn't fit their definition. They, they stopped paying the 100000 whatever dollars for the pool to the YMCA, who was a private organization, that they were giving them $100,000 for their pool. And we have a pool, and now we're not getting anything. That was one of the questions we needed to get answered. Why did, you, why did they give it to the YMCA, but they're not going to give it to the city of Northport to operate a pool? It, it, None of this makes any sense, and it is grossly unfair to our citizens to pay for this expansion and take over this transition of parks and the county be absolved so that the county commissioners or the county staff can say, hey, we haven't raised taxes in the county at the county level for decades. Yeah. Meanwhile, the citizens of the city of Northport pay taxes to the county, get reduced services from the county, and then they have to pick it up here at the city. This is, this is frustrating beyond frustrating. There is a possibility to do a Zoom meeting, and I would encourage, let's take a vote or get a consensus to encourage the city manager to see about arranging a Zoom meeting between now and October 1st. 
Sooner the better, but everybody's on break anyways. Yeah, this I next think month. they're on break now. They're on break now. And, and we're, we're on, on break, break in August. August. Yes. It, it, if it's a Zoom meeting, we can have it in August when they come back. And because I can sit in Michigan at my mama's house and get on a Zoom meeting. But getting exactly. them back, you know, operable to me is the most important thing. But if it's Zoom, I can, I can jump on it. I, think, I do think making it most available to them. So this way it's right. on them whether or not they are available. Exactly. Not whether or not we are. Exactly. But I, the reason that we haven't had this meeting is because of COVID. And I sit there and go, how many meetings have they had? How many meetings have we had? And there is technology. So I'm sorry, it's not holding water. You know, we can schedule a Zoom meeting and, and do it that way. Um, I don't see what that big deal is. So can I either... Can we get a motion or a consensus here, City Attorney? Which would you prefer? The motion and workshop. It's not a workshop. No, it's a special meeting. It's, I'm, I make a motion that uh, City Manager reach out to the County Administrator uh, to work to schedule a Zoom meeting, joint meeting with the County Commission. And see if they are willing to extend this uh, contract to the end of this fiscal year, which would be September 30, uh, 21. 21. 21, until we have that joint meeting. Second. Motion on the floor is stated by Vice Mayor. Is it clear, City Clerk? Okay, I have it written down, but I didn't want to paraphrase like I, my notes show, and that was seconded by Commissioner um, Hanks. Mayor, can I ask a question? Hang on, after after we, I'll get to you. Hang on. Um, mm -hmm. As the motion maker, Vice Mayor, do you have anything you'd like to to say to the motion? I don't think I need to say anything further on that. Thank you, Commissioner Hanks. Is the seconder? I think everything's been said. I think the frustrations are shown. I think it's been said and shown for over a year now. Um, you know, uh, if we're going to work together, we need to work together. Thank you. Commissioner Carrison, go ahead, please. I just need clarification. It sounds like we're giving them an entire year to have a Zoom meeting. No, that what it's doing is seeing if they will actually uh, extend the contract or what they're doing until the end of September 30, 2021, because that Zoom meeting needs to happen ASAP. But if they drag their feet in coming with a compromise or something with us, we at least have a full year next year going into it. And hopefully in that Zoom meeting, we would know how to look at our budget for this coming year also. So but. then should we not amend it so that there's a deadline on that Zoom meeting? If you want to go ahead, do so. May I amend the motion to have Zoom meeting take place prior to October 5th? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the date. October 5th? Actually, uh, when does our budget have to be finalized? What's the date? <coughs> September. September 15th or something. Middle of September. Middle of September. September. Okay, so then it has to be prior to September 7th. I'll second. Motion on the floor to amend the motion to include a Zoom meeting prior to 9-7 with County Commission, um, made by Commissioner Carrison, seconded by Commissioner, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Carrison, anything to that amendment? No, I just think that that clarifies that we are not willing to wait until after the election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, anything to that? No, I agree with her. 100%. Anything to the amendment that's on the floor? City Manager, you look puzzled. So I'm sending this letter to the county administrator, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure I know who I'm sending it. Who's you, sending it to whom? You, yeah, I stated City Manager to county I thought, administrator. So I just wanted to verify. Because they have a sealed hierarchy. That's the only way that that county commission will accept anything from this board is that it goes through you to him and then he relays it to them. 
they won't do it any other way. So it has to be done that way. Anything else on the amendment, guys? Go ahead, we'll take the voice vote on the amendment as the motion maker, Commissioner Carousel. Yes. The amendment, thank you. A vice mayor? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And I am a hell yes. <laughs> that passes five to zero. And back to the main motion, we heard from Commissioner Carousel. Are you finished, ma'am, or are you okay on the main motion? Uh, did you yes, want to speak to it? I'm good as amended. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. I'm asking no, you I don't anything, have anything to speak to it. Um, except you both have said hell already, so. Um, the only comment I would like to make is that this way we're, we're going to be focusing from the motion that I'm hearing is that we're going to be focusing strictly on this contract in that Zoom meeting. We have a list of other items we wanted to talk about in our joint meeting, and that included the $100, or I'm sorry, $100,000, whatever that amount is, with the YMCA payment. I really think we need to talk about that too at this meeting because that's another hundred thousand plus dollars that we can be using that they were giving to a nonprofit. We pay taxes to them. And I think it's relevant. That was their that interlocal it, agreement with the nonprofit? I understand that, but if they had that interlocal with the nonprofit to help subsidize the pool. I'd like to have a conversation as to why they can't have that agreement with the city to help subsidize the pool. If so if I can... It, I believe the 150000 originally went to the city, and then when the Y started doing the programming and things at the Y, or at uh, Algol, it swung over to them, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. There was a switch. I thought You're correct. Right. Thank you, Vanessa. I thought so. But see, the Y was also supposed to maintain a athletic gym type thing that was over by Winn Dixie Park, and when they renegotiated this agreement, that went away too. Well, it's relevant yeah. in our conversation on the Zoom meeting because Dallas White Park and what went on with the Y is at a park. And so we are talking about this contract with the parks. So it is relevant that it be part of that Zoom meeting. But I want to make Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And I agree that it's relative, but I also want to make sure that we see the relative so that when city manager sends his letter, that it's not just this transition agreement, that we are also saying, hey, we're going to be talking about this too. Because I don't want them to come back and say, hey, it's not on the things that you wanted to talk about, so we're not talking about it. I think we 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 should probably amend it to make sure that that's also included. Mayor, go ahead. I am willing to end the motion to include subject topic the transition or not transition. <laughs> Okay, let's try it again. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, without all the reverb. <laughs> Go oh. ahead. Anyways, I'll try to um, amend the motion again. Go ahead. Make sure that it's a, a list of topics not limited to the following. Being a financial impact due to the park agreement, possible renegotiation of the park agreement, as well as monies to nonprofit entities and not recuperated city. In the current parks agreement, and again, that's not limited to those items, but that is the crux of our discussion. I'll second the amendment. 
Got an amendment on the floor to add topics relating to the financial impact of the parks agreement and renegotiation and monies for nonprofit that weren't given to the city. That was made by Commissioner Carison, seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to that, Commissioner Carison? I just want to clear that that amendment was to say and not limited to those subjects. Oh, thank you. Allows us to stay open. <laughs> Thank you. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Uh, that that one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, we all know where government gets the money, and that's from the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So they were issuing one hundred and fifty thousand of that fifteen million that we give them to that nonprofit in order to run the programming, which they are no longer giving to anybody. So again, that shows where there is a shortage being taken away from our city uh, in the services. Thank you. And all I got to say is thank you, Commissioner Carison and Vice Mayor, for going ahead with that second amendment to this main motion, because I think it's imperative that we have that conversation. Um, so hearing and seeing no other conversations, Commissioner Carison is the motion maker for the second amendment. Go ahead, please, with your vote. Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And I also am a yes. Thank you very much. Anything more to the main motion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a vote on the main motion as amended twice. Um, motion maker was uh, Vice Mayor, please? Yes. And Commissioner Hanks as a seconder? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carison? Yes. And I also am a yes, so that passed. So these three um, relatively connected things have all passed. Thank you. So the other questions and concerns that I have, and I greatly appreciate that those check marks have been taken away. Um, I, I have some questions about the sports activities and when they happen on those fields. All right, so we, we know that Little League, and I, I only know this because I'm a Little League mom, that Little League happens twice, uh, one for fall ball and then one for the spring league season. And then if there's any tournaments, that's up. So generally speaking, it's in the fall and it's in the spring. What happens to the field and the maintenance on the off season, there is still um, there is still use. We still have a an adult league that wants to play, and they try to squeeze in when there isn't play for the little league. Um, and then there is a necessary rest time. This is when you do the renovations. This is when you do the um, laser grading to make sure that the lifts are okay and the warning tracks are in place, and all of those things that look really good but are really in place for safety. Um, and for ongoing lifespan of the of the field so that they can withstand the heat and the rain um, and the play. So field rest is extremely important to program in there as well. Field rest? Rest periods for fields are very important. So that's the time where the field, um, you can overseed it and make sure that, that that roof system has the opportunity to really grow down. Um, then it's prepared when there's a lot of play, a lot of heat, a lot of sun, a lot of uh, heat and cleats running through it. If the root system isn't provided that time to grow down, you know, you'll have a couple really crazy games and you'll have a barren field. So um, scheduling rest is important for a field. That's when they do the thatching and stuff right. like that. So keeping when, it healthy. When is the Naramore fields used? I mean, I, I know about it, so when is the Naramore fields used um, for the soccer? There's multiple seasons for soccer as well. Um, very similar. There's a fall season, a spring season. Um, there's an adult season. Those fields also get used to some for, um, you know, multi-purpose fields can be used for lacrosse, um, soccer, football. Uh, so, so they get a lot of use too. And if you go back through the presentation, you'll see that there's a lot of hours of use at these fields. Right. But again, just like just like the baseball fields, rest is going to be an important important part of the uh, field schedule for all of our fields. And then also taking into consideration rainy season, 
And there's unfortunately a lot of times where fields are just closed because they're just too wet to play on safely. So then what does our staff do? See, that's where I was going with all this. What does our staff do when there's nothing going on with those fields? And because of the rain, what are they doing then? They do a lot of work. So um, just because there's not play doesn't mean that they're not working. That's when they're doing a lot of the hard maintenance work to work on but the, the nematodes. the fields are wet. Oh, I'm sorry. So there's, <laughs> well, there's two things going on. So there's the rest period. During the rest period, there's a lot of work that's going on. During the rainy period, um, Jeff has a list that we already have for our team. So that's a great time to maintain your equipment. Um, that's a great time to get your certified pest control licenses, um, all of those things redone. There's a there's a lot of backup work that still needs to happen to you know document <coughs> all these fields. Fleet takes care of the equipment, correct? The fleet does not take care of the hand equipment, so there's still equipment that needs to be maintained. And you have a. Yeah, they take care of our writing Nelson. equipment and things like that. Jeff, um, Jeff Nelson, Parks and Grants Manager. Mm -hmm. right now. Um, yeah, so there, what, when um, Fisher was talking about field rest, rest means mm -hmm. that there's no play activity happening. That doesn't mean that there's not a lot of work happening. There's, there's plenty of work happening. And even in the wet season, if our fields are, are maintained correctly, we still should be able to do some work on those fields when, when we get normal rain we get a, a a big storm then maybe not but so we're still doing a lot of work going back to equipment we have edgers we have hedgers we have all those kind of things that we do some of that maintenance ourselves, and uh, oil changes and things like that so sharpening blade sharpening all those kind of things so we do those in-house so there's a lot of things that we can be doing there's fence repairs, there's dugout repairs. There's a lot of things that we can do when the fields are wet or resting. So there's, there's plenty to do out there, I promise. All right, so I have a question about the revenue side of it. Um, according to the PowerPoint presentation, the county makes approximately $65,000 in revenues. I found a fee schedule from 2016, five years ago, almost six. And they're the exact same rates. So the county has not raised their rates in that length of time. But the cost of personnel, the cost of equipment, the cost of everything has, has gone up, the inflationary costs. Which then means that those inflationary costs should have also trickled down to the end users. A little bit over time, you know, maybe 50 cents, maybe a dollar, maybe 75 cents. I don't know. They didn't do any of that. So now we are going to be expecting our taxpayers to pay $1.5 million to maintain these fields and return in the investment is $65,000. That is not going to fly. I I'm telling you, it's not going to fly. And I firmly agree that our youth is better spent out on the field than in jail and getting into trouble. And I get all that. But at the same token, we have to raise some of these rates a little bit. Now, I saw the team's men's basketball team. I don't know. They, they pay, I don't know, $250 to $400 per team. What if we were to see about charging per team? That way, then, it's a flat rate, and maybe we get more money that way. I don't know. Um, I, do we have to maintain these fields to the exemplarily quadruple gold star status that they are now? Maybe we're going to, ha we're going to have to reduce the level of service, because if you're only collecting 65000 but you're paying out... 1.5 million, something's got to give. We have a pool that we also have to take care of that we're getting no help on. And I know COVID's not being very helpful with that whole thing either. Something's got to give, folks. And, and it, it may just go down to either we're going to have to raise those rates, again, because the county hasn't done it all these years, and now we're going to have to do it, 
and oh, the city's raising these rates, or we're going to have to reduce the level of service. Mayor? Can, can I get an answer before you? Is, is there any, any possibility of looking at those rate increases? I know we talked about giving this as the fee schedule, but that was before I found out that the last time they raised their weights was in 16. And it may even be longer than that. Well, we, Tricia provided some of that information from Charlotte County. Uh, we certainly can look at raising the rates. I, our direction um, from I, budget workshop was to come back with the revenue based on the current rates. Um, so whichever direction commission would like us to go, we're happy to provide that information. I don't know that we have a lot of um, uh, other examples mm -hmm. to, to look at, because it's really Charlotte County and Sarasota County. Uh, City of Sarasota doesn't really have this Type of structure uh, and of course Venice does not have that either um, we can look at it we can bring back information on it um, it's what about chart we we charge resident rates Northport resident rates and we charge non-resident rates why can't we do something like that for these fields um, do do we get a lot of non-resident rate or non-resident users does Little League get non-resident users because our fields are so beautiful? And in Charlotte County, I don't even know if they have a very big Little League field for this side of Charlotte County. Maybe they're coming in to use Northport Little League. Maybe we can look at possibly charging non-resident rates for things, too. I'm just trying to think outside of the box and come up with some alternatives because we have got to increase these revenues to help offset these costs. We've got to. I think um, trying to do it from a resident, non-resident rate would be difficult to manage for us. Uh, the teams are responsible for the rosters and for the registration. That's not something that we would want to get involved with. Um, so it would be dependent on what they're providing us and that, that fee would change every season, depending on what the, the attendance is. I think if you want to look at um, whatever rate they're getting is because there's a certain percentage of the entire registration that's resident versus non-resident. You know, they have to have at least 80% resident in order to qualify for these rates. I think that would be easier for on our end to manage and track, um, but to actually have to charge for each different participant, um, that would be a lot of administrative work. And, and I hear you. Um, I'm, I'm, again, trying to find some other sources of revenue. Um, Vice Mayor mentioned that a lot of teams come to use our fields for, um, you know, tournaments. What if they're not residents? Can we charge extra? I mean, our taxpayers are paying for this. And I know that it's going to bring revenue to the nearby restaurants and the nearby soon to be hotel, I get that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, our residents, our taxpayers are paying for this. Well, there's, we, we can look at all those fees. There's a category for almost every situation uh, that the county currently has. It's not just all youth groups. There's, there's, it's graduated into different um, definitions. So if you, if you want us to take a look at that, we can. I think we would just, we're happy to bring back the information and, and give you what we think the calculations would be. Um, we just need direction on that. Sounds good. Commissioner Carasone, you wanted to speak to this? Yeah. I think that we need an education on how leagues work. Um, they are required to have a um, guideline of what their, their yield are supposed to look like at, and maintain maintenance level. So there's that. The other thing is that these are national leagues. These are not people who get together from, um, I don't know, Boca Grande who decided to come over and use our field. So these are kids that live in the city that are part of a national organization that has their own regulatory 
mandate on top of the state mandate. I wouldn't. So I think we have to be careful about trying to reduce the quality of service when there's most likely a bottom line leaks. Furthermore, pay. They have the interlocal agreement um, that they pay the rate for use. And I would bet money that the county is not spending more than what it receives. Is it receiving more than what it pays out here in the city? Most likely. Try to prove it. Good luck. OK. So that's one thing. The other thing is that um, we talk, you talked about the use of fields and how there's a downtime. Well, we have to understand that fields aren't is just utilized by the national team leagues. Uh, I-9 Sports uses some. Uh, the YMCA started a new uh, summer league campaign. Um, there's other types of organizations that utilize fields when the main organization is not using it. So we need to keep that in the context. And those are additional rentals, by the way. I think one of the problems we're going to is when those for the love of <coughs> we lost you. Yeah. Your last statement, ma'am, if you could restate that, please. I think that one of the things that we need to pay closer attention to is when these other organizations try and attempt to rent fields out in those in-between times is the excessive uh, requirements for special event permits, special permits. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And I can only imagine how much money Parks is losing uh, because of these overregulations. So that's on the mind. But um, in summary, I really think what we need to discuss is what do we do next if the commission, uh, yeah, their administrators say no. And I think that that's where this question needs to be led. Well. Is she done? I don't know. I. Yeah. Did you sound okay? I, I, I heard really a longer wanted. pause. So, uh, Want that Commissioner Emmerich. No, I agree with with Commissioner Carson, and and I'm just going to jump on that bat bandwagon about the special use permit. I think we are losing out a lot on on the regulations that are there. Um, but I would also cautious ourselves when we're looking. I would love to see the fees. I, I have no problems with adjusting the fees. I just don't want to outprice us from the fees because you still got to have the maintenance, and they just may go elsewhere and not use our facilities. So you have to be cautious in what you're looking at and what you're trying to accomplish. You've got parents that are paying taxes, and then the kids have to pay their league fees, so the parents are actually paying twice to use this facility so their kids can you know, enjoy some sports and athletics. So I think we have to look at it in the big picture and, and see where we're at. Yeah, we're getting the shaft, and we got to fix it somehow. So we just got to look at all the angles at the same time and see what's the most beneficial way we can help our citizens we can make the city as whole as possible and, and just make it a comfortable tax base as best as we can. We're, we're in a pickle. So yeah, I, I'm, no way am I suggesting that we raise these rates to be revenue neutral. Absolutely not. <laughs> or, no, I wasn't I, suggesting okay, that I, I just saying that these costs to maintain these fields at least for the past five years, that's the furthest I could find back, was 2016. Um, I couldn't find any older rates than that. Um, shows the same amount of money coming in. But we know that if our expenses have gone up in the past five years, the county's has gone up in the past five years, and they're not, they weren't doing anything to, um, 
uh, to adjust that, even if it's a CPI adjustment. Um, you know, nothing was done for five, six years. So now we have to take this over, and now we also have to justify to our entire property owners, our taxpayers across the entire city, why we are only collecting $65,000 when we could be collecting a little bit more or a medium amount more. Maybe it's also going to boil down to that we stripe the field in the morning and the leagues are responsible for striping them the rest of the time, the rest of the day, to help reduce some of that cost. This is where I'm getting into the level of service. Mayor, can we remember that parks is paid for through our tax in the county? I so when you have both, even though they've not reduced their taxes or increased their taxes, that growth adds to the revenue that they've been collecting. So therefore, they receive more revenue, which would, in fact, help with that added sense. So we need to remember that. I would love to remember that, but I didn't hear it, that, that. need was to remember that. that point. The point is, is that it's not just he's collected by the different leagues. You're also getting money from taxpayers that is also paying for all of it. And so that's the cush is in the growth of taxpayers. No, I, un I, under I understand everything that everybody is saying. I I'm just trying to remind everybody, too, that we may not be able to do the fields after every three games. They may have to do that. You know, we may not be able to maintain the fields every, what was the, the every four, four days, I think it was. We may have to extend it. We may have to look at other options than just what the county's gold star standard was um, for us because the county has put us in this pickle. That's, that's all I'm just trying to reiterate um, and see if maybe these users pick up some additional responsibilities than paying to use the fields. I remember when my kids played Little League between every game, the person that just used the field re, re, um, restriped it for the next team that came in. And then the last team of the day restriped it again, which usually got restriped when the county came in the next day or the next week and restriped it anyways. Um, we, we may have to look at that and, and have that kind of a conversation. And I know I'm just talking about restriping, but I'm sure there's other things that these users can do in between as opposed to us paying our staff to sit there, watch a couple of Little League games. Oh, I got to go restripe the field. Oh, I get to sit and watch a couple of Little League games and then go restripe the field. I, I think we can find better use of the time and, and the resources that we do have available to us and, and use them in the most prudent way possible. That's the only thing I'm trying to get across. Well, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm speaking for myself. I don't want to see the quality of our field diminish. Uh, I have a lot of pride in what goes on. Uh, that is why I think the timing of all of this, the contract of when they're ceasing it, comes into play. We already had in the budget hearing stating to leave the fees the same for that July, August, September. This increase that could potentially come, uh, I see coming in the next fiscal year, not throwing a monkey wrench in on the renters for those three months. But again, that timing of the contract is what I'm saying is vitally important. And if a compromise can be reached um, in a new contract, we could take over the registration and they continue with the maintenance. Uh, I don't think there's a staff member that sits out there watching a game to restripe. Uh, they, they go back after, they might be able to, the user might be able to restripe, but when they're doing the work themselves too, how are you gonna raise the cost on them when they're doing the maintenance? So there's a lot that comes into play. I wanted to get through uh, July, August, September of 2021 before we have to raise prices and costs on the people. 
and we may end up having to do that. But um, I don't want to see the quality diminished. Um, we, we shouldn't have to. Uh, county has a great staff that takes care of that. The contractors, whoever they have, uh, do a great job. And um, I like it that our kids and our families uh, are adults that utilize the field. Even Team Doogie, he goes out and uses field too, uh, have a good quality product in order to enjoy their life in. Um, when I was looking at the um, agreement, the interlocal between the county and the, and the city, <coughs> and that was in 2006, the whereas clauses really popped out at me. Um, the city and county are mutually interested in providing and making available recreation programs, activities, facilities in the city. The city and the county acknowledge the advantages and the importances of providing affordable recreational programs that serve the public purpose and promote the community's interest in welfare. The city and county enter into this interlocal, providing that the consolidation of specified city and county recreational programs, activities, and facilities under the direction of the county have a common objective of providing, maintaining, and conducting a comprehensive program of recreational. Um, services. Until it sounds like now the county is then saying, oh, we're done. And, and where is that collaboration that has existed for the past 15 years? And, and that to me is sending a very wrong message. And I would sincerely hope that the county staff, commissioners, administrator, really look at the message they're sending to the citizens of Northport. Um, I would like to ask for uh, a motion. I'm going to pass the gavel. Um, I'd like to get a motion to have the city manager send that letter by the end of business today, copy the commission um, to the county administrator, um, so that way then we can get this thing rolling. It's a simple letter. No, actually it's not. Um, i got to figure out exactly the wording you wrote. If I, you gotta at least give me till tomorrow. The time we get out of here, the day's already half over. <laughs> All right, so I will make a motion. Scratch that first one, guys, sorry. I will make a motion to have the city manager prepare a letter to the county administrator based on the motion and amendments by the end of business tomorrow, meaning Tuesday the 14th, and copy the commission with that letter. <coughs> There's a motion on the floor to direct the city manager to draft a letter or the letter to be sent to the county administrator to be done by close of business tomorrow uh, with a copy to all of the commissioners. Do I have a second? I'll make a compromise, or I'll, I'll second just for discussion. Thank we, you. We, we, have, we have a meeting tomorrow. I, right. But I've, and there may, there may need to be some preparedness for that meeting tomorrow. So can we say close a business on Wednesday that gives him a couple days to sit back, relax, get his wording together? I thought also. So that's, that's what I'd be leaning towards. I, I would be amenable to that, and I appreciate the compromise. I'm just trying to no, make I, sure I, I that agree. It, everybody understands this is something very important. I agree I with you. It's, it's very important, but to just rush into it, I'd rather take our time and do it proper. That's I, all. I will agree to that minor change at the end of business on 7-15. So will you restate your motion for clarity, please? So basically, the motion is the same, except changing it from end of business tomorrow to end of business 715, which is Wednesday. Clerk, is it all right to just state that change? OK, so Thank there you. is a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, same as before, directing the city manager to draft this letter to send to the county administrator by close of business on Wednesday. Is there anything to that motion? 
Oh, I'm, I appreciate Commissioner Emmerich's second and uh, compromise. I appreciate that. The whole purpose is to get it done and done in a very timely manner. Okay. And thank you. Anything, Mr. All right, well, call the vote. Mayor? Yes. 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 And I'm a yes. Uh, yes. Thank you very She's much. A yes. <laughs> so uh, that motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank Gavel you. going back. All right. And um, I did have a suggestion too, whenever you get done too. I, I think um, I am done. I, I do, I would like to kind of see what the responsibility of the users are based on the current um, status quo that's out there. What, what are their responsibilities? Because um, I think that would be helpful in our conversation too. Yes. So we can bring that back um, just so everybody understands that they're not under any uh, agreements for use. It's all on a rental fee basis. So it'll, we'll look at the um, their policies and procedures that they have for rentals and bring that information back. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Emmerich, you said you had something else. Yeah, I have a I have a suggestion too that y'all may want to look at too because a lot of what I was hearing earlier, a lot of your leagues are going on between winter, fall, spring. Those are all dry seasons. I understand that the fields still need to be done, but maybe we look at cutting some of the services, slowing them down because right now you should be on a seven to ten day mowing schedule, approximately. In the wintertime, you're probably doing a neighborhood park twice a month. You can co-mingle that labor if you're just mowing grass in certain areas. Yes, you still have your technical specialists, but you may not need, you were looking at eight of them, you may only need six. You know, I would look at, you know, cross-training some people, getting it out there and looking at that to see how it's going to happen. Because if you look at the football fields back here, it doesn't seem to be there's much... Uh, maintenance except for mowing the grass and all the maintenance workers can mow grass you don't have to be highly technical in turf to run a mower over grass so what i'm saying is is you might be able to downsize in some of your employees and still get the same amount because you do rainy seasons in the summer everybody's mowing grass in the summer but it starts going away come september october all the way up until like maybe may or june so just look at that aspect of it and you may cut, you know, a couple salaries out of there. And then when we look at the rental of the equipment, we could have saved some of that as well. So, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, a couple hundred grand here and just some of these little easy to work suggestions, you know, commingle the labor out there, still parks and rec and maybe a ball field. It may be a neighborhood park, but it's still mowing grass, most of it. So I would suggest looking at that. Thank you. That's all I had. Vice Mayor. I have three questions after looking through the contract, just curious questions. Uh, have you received your past year report on the parks? Yes. In February? Yes. Okay. And who from the city does the quarterly inspection with the county quarterly? Currently it's Jeff. I've done them in the past as well. Okay, do, when you guys go out quarterly, are you given a printout of what was completed? Yes, Thank you. Um, is a file kept on all of that? Uh, who is our city rep on the County Park and Rec Council? Our um, city rep just uh, resigned. So we had a rep, Robin Short, she moved outside of the city of Northport, so she could no longer be on our board. Um, we have a meeting on Thursday. During that meeting, we are looking to elect a new chair and make a recommendation for that representative. Are you talking about our board? So okay, I'm not talking about our board. I'm talking about county. Yes, We're supposed so to we have take, a rep up there. We take somebody from our Parks and Rec Advisory Board. That board nominates or makes a recommendation of one of their board members. That recommendation comes to the city commission okay. for approval. Um, so that will, we anticipate this happening on Thursday since she just resigned from that position, but had been Robin Short. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. Does anybody have anything else? Commissioner Carasong? 
No, I'm good. Thank I you. mean, like this, what we do, they in our letter request. Yeah. Um, Mr. Emmerich, do you have anything? No, I think I'm good. All right. Um, City Clerk, do we have any uh, public comment that may have come in? No, we do not. City, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor, do we have any public comment? No, nothing's been handed in. Fantastic. Um, Charter officers, did anybody want to weigh in on anything on this? City attorney? No, ma'am. City manager? No, ma'am. City clerk? All righty. So it is now 11.55. Have a nice day, and thank you for the meeting. Order.